Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. A while ago, I posted a video on 10 pieces of advice for survival radio. This time, it's about 10 pieces of equipment that I think are must-haves or work extremely well for survival and portable radio. And number one <laughs> is the 6-meter fishing pole. Yeah, and as you can see, it's not very long. Now it extends to six meters, of course, so about uh, 19 feet, which is a quarter wave on 20 meters or a half wave on CB or 10 meters. It can also be used with another antenna that I'm going to show you. Now it's pretty light, it's not a burden to carry, and you can have an antenna up very easily with this. You can also use one of these supports stick it in the ground, put your antenna, your fishing pole in it, and you're good to go. I even have a 7 meter version right here in the corner. Now, one other advantage, you can even go fishing with it. Number two, to go with your 6 meter fishing pole, the QRP Guys Tri-Band Antenna. Now, I'm not biased towards any manufacturer, but they really came up with something very smart here. It has toroids on this side, and uh, you can choose between 20 meters, which doesn't use the toroids, 30 meters, and 40 meters. So, three bands. It has four radials, uh, 10 foot radials, and a 17 foot radiating wire. So great with your six meter pole. And this antenna works really, really well. It's small, it's slight, you can put it in your bag. It's very easy to use. And uh, it really <laughs> works really well. Number three, the 49 to one or 64 to one and fed half wave transformer. Now you can make them different sizes. This is a 49 to 1, this is a 64 to 1. But they could be, you know, the other size because of course that depends on the uh, size of the toroid you're using. So this uses very small toroid. It's not as efficient, but it's pretty small. This one is a little bigger, uses an FT140-43. Uh, and it works for, you know, any band between 80 meters, 3.5 megahertz and 50 meters, 50 megahertz. Now you just add a half wave wire and you've got your vertical antenna. No need for a tuner. It's very efficient and again, it works really well. The only disadvantage is that of course, a half wave wire on the lower bands, starting on uh, you know 30 meters, 10 megahertz and lower, is going to be pretty long. Now, it doesn't mean it has to be big, this is a wire for a half wave wire for 30 meters. As you can see, it's not much at all. Uh, you take a fishing line with a slingshot, a one ounce, you know, 32 gram weight, shoot that up in a tree and you've got your antenna. All right, you all know I have a certain fondness for Morse code. <laughs> and uh, so one thing that works really well because it's very efficient, it's small, it's simple, uh, it's easy to pack and doesn't draw much current, is a small QRP Morse code radio. This is the MTR-3B mountain top radio from LNR Precision. It used to come as a kit. It's designed by Steve Weber, which uh, is a QRP radio guru, basically, <laughs> designer. And uh, this one is a little bit of expensive today, uh, I think it's around $250, but it has three bands, 20 meters, 30 meters, and 40 meters. So you get your day band, in this case 20 meters, and your night band, 40 meters, which is what you want for survival radio. You need to be able to communicate during the day and at night. There are others, of course, uh, for instance, this is a QCX I built. It's from qrp-labs.com. It's a single band radio. I don't remember which one that is because I have one for 30 meters and one for 80 meters. And uh, I think that's the 30 meters one. Uh, the other one, the, uh, this plug is a little bit closer to this one. <laughs> I should put a label on them really because I could confuse them easily. 
it's only fifty dollars well not including the case you know but still very cheap and uh, you can have a range of a few thousand miles with these radios uh, it's amazing they don't draw much current at all easy to pack once again and uh, they work our next item only works with low current draw radios but it's really a gift to amateur radio and that's the 18650 cell it's a uh, lithium ion cell I believe and uh, it's 4.2 volts when it's charged to the brim and uh, it can go down to 3 volts so you use three of them actually you can make a pack like this one and you have a 12.6 volt battery that is pretty darn small and uh, probably uh, can go up to 3000 milliamps so 3 amp hour you shouldn't forget to put a charging lead on it because these cells have to be charged individually uh, not through the 12 volt connector they are pretty cheap they work really well you can find them in old laptop batteries most of the time there's only one or two cells that are damaged in these laptop batteries so you crack them open get the cells and use that for your radios so I have a bunch of them of course you should have a specialized charger I use the Nightcore UM10 uh, I also have a BC uh, I don't remember the number all right here it is it's a BC4S15D so a cheap Chinese charger but uh, it does charge the, it does balance the cells uh, it's a 12 volt input and you can plug in your charging lead right here so uh, you can actually buy a few of those <laughs> for not much money uh, the UM10 from Nightcore is this one and I use that with my solar panel because it's a USB input so plug in your uh, USB battery pack or your USB small solar panel and you can charge your 18650 cells one by one I actually have two of them so I can charge two at a time I also recently found a three cell MPPT solar charger on eBay and I'm going to make a video about this so this is for an upcoming video but this solar charger will charge three cells at once and I have a uh, 20 watt panel that I'm going to use for that so the 18650 cells is a big winner for me uh, and that's what I use with most of my portable radios one antenna that I find myself using all the time is the hybrid micro from chameleon antennas with the whip antenna uh, the whip is about 3.2 meters I think the new one is uh, 2.8 something like that anyway it's a standard fitting you can put your antenna here this is very well built and you can use it with the jar mount which you know you just screw in the hybrid micro here clamp that onto something you can rotate it as well and uh, <laughs> it can be used with a uh, lot of different bands and of course you need a tuner but it's so easy to set up the only uh, disadvantage for me is the price uh, and it's uh, you know it's got a little bit of weight to it you can also use it with the ground spike and this is a little bit heavy too but very strong uh, you just screw it in boom stick it in the ground humidify the base a bit uh, for better contact with the ground and uh, put your whip antenna here and you're good to go so that's a big winner I use that all the time now it's not a uh, super efficient antenna of course a compromise antenna but it does work very well next one on the list <laughs> you're going to laugh about this one it's masking tape usually it's blue but uh, I've got white one and just change of color I guess uh, doesn't matter but I use this for everything to tie up wires uh, you know to uh, attach them to my my fishing pole uh, it ties stuff together I just there are so many uses for this this is something that I always want in my radio box because I always need it all the time you can find it very easily and it, it just saves the day <laughs> 
Next one, and this is a small guy, but boy, does it do a lot. The BNC adapter for banana plugs. It also has a hole here, so you can put a wire in there and tie it down. And if you make your own antennas, you need a bunch of them. <laughs> you can make a dipole with this. You can make a uh, delta loop antenna. You can, you can make anything you want. And I've used them so often, I buy them by the box, really, because uh, they're so, so useful. You need a few of them. Find them on eBay. They're very cheap. Uh, it's just one of those things that you always need one. Another gizmo that I use often is the 9 to 1 Unun. Now, I've showed you my 49 to 1 and 64 to 1 transformers. Those are impedance transformers. So is this one, but it's a 9 to 1, so it's for lower impedance. You're not going to use this with a half wave wire. This is to be used with random wires. And I have a video on the subject that I posted uh, recently, so go check it out. I'll put the link in the description. So this is used with a wire that's not a half wave. The advantage is that by using a tuner, you can use your random wire for multiple bands. But that's not what I use it for because, you know, I prefer half wave wires on a 49 to 1 or 64 to 1 transformer. I use this to <laughs> tune things with a tuner that are not necessarily, or that are not at all antennas, like barbed wire fences, you know, uh, some kind of tower. Uh, I once tuned a windmill <laughs> with this to use as an antenna. And that's what it's good for. Uh, you can find a piece of metal or something or a piece of wire that you're not sure how long it is or anything you can think of. It's probably uh, has a few hundred ohm impedance. So by using this uh, little uh, transformer, you lower that impedance closer to 50 ohms and you might even be lucky and get spot on. But, you know, you lower the impedance a bit so that your tuner can uh, take up the slack and tune the antenna. Now it's not going to be efficient, but in some cases it just might work and save the day because uh, otherwise you wouldn't have an antenna. So here's what it uh, looks like inside and uh, they're pretty easy to make. They're called, it's called the Urshi Unun, E-A-R-C-H-I of the Hawaii uh, uh, Radio Club. And you can find the drawings for this uh, on their website. And our last item, but not the least, the rat tail. And I have a video about this too. This is a 19 inch wire, 50 centimeters. So a quarter wave on two meters, 144 megahertz, that you attach to the base of your antenna. Now this is the ground lug basically. Uh, so you have a quarter wave here, quarter wave here, which makes a half wave, perfect length for an antenna because otherwise this is not a quarter wave. So something is missing here and you add it by using this wire. And it makes a tremendous, tremendous difference in your signal strength and reception. And go check my video about it, but uh, you can check also the video that I've made with my friends at uh, the uh, Plateau de Lotion. And uh, he made a contact with Sardinia, 380 kilometers using one of these and a small tiny radio a VX1 that had 100 milliwatts. <laughs> so this really works guys. Uh, if you want to extend your range for your handheld on a two meter band, use a rat tail because uh, it does make a huge difference. So that's it guys. <laughs> no uh, big adventure today, but I hope you liked uh, these items because uh, it's stuff that I've been using for a long time and that I found actually really work and I wouldn't want to be without. <laughs> that's uh, it's for certain. So uh, I hope you find them useful, uh, some of them anyway, and that uh, you might adopt in your kit. You have a good one.